In recent months, falling energy costs have brought sighs of relief for price watchers on both sides of the Atlantic. As attention shifts to core inflation, a measure that strips out volatile food and energy prices, the question on many minds is whether Europeans will end up with a worse inflation problem than their transatlantic peers. Core inflation in the Eurozone has been higher than in America since October, and economists are now trying to understand the factors behind this trend. The current bout of inflation is not easily explained by traditional economic theories, as it is caused by a complex combination of post-pandemic supply disruptions, fiscal splurges, and energy shock and labor shortages, which have created a near-perfect storm causing prices to soar. The speed at which inflation comes down may therefore depend not only on what central banks do, but also on how these factors affect economies on either side of the Atlantic. The pandemic has caused extraordinary turmoil in the basic operations of rich world economies as it altered how people work, what they consume, and where they live, and did so in a very short period of time. As restrictions are lifted, there has been a surge in demand for travel, nights out, and treats. On top of this, governments in America and Europe have decided to subsidize green technologies on an unprecedented scale. This means that capital, production inputs, and workers need to move to parts of the economy that are growing and away from those that are shrinking. However, moving jobs or investing in new plants or software takes time, and a boom can accelerate the process. Recent studies suggest that workers in Germany are more likely to change jobs when demand is high, and that moving to a growing firm can increase pay for the job-switching workers substantially. The current shifts in the economy are therefore likely to produce some inflation, and that may be desirable. A recent paper by economists at the University of Chicago argues that monetary policy should tolerate somewhat higher inflation if doing so allows workers to find a new job during periods of economic change. However, government policies in America and Europe have affected the pace of adjustment to these changes. Europe's approach was generally to try to freeze things in place during the pandemic by creating generous furlough schemes that kept workers in their existing jobs. This means that unlike America, there was no boom in durable goods consumption financed by stimulus checks that required expanded production. Nor did Europe run its economy hot to aid a reallocation of workers and capital. If inflation in America is the result of an economic reshuffle, it may come down faster than Europe's once that process is complete. Europe also had to cope with a different economic hit, as supply crunches accounted for a greater share of inflation in 2020 to 2021. Wholesale gas and electricity prices began to rise in autumn 2021 and soared after Russia invaded Ukraine, with oil and coal prices following. This added much more to inflation in energy importing in Europe than it did in America. The consensus in economics is that central banks should not tighten policy too much in response to a temporary supply or energy shock. Coping with such a shock is hard enough, and there is no need to give the screw another turn. The effects should subside over time as long as inflation expectations stay stable. Now that supply crunches and everything from lumber to chips are easing and energy prices are coming down, Europe should benefit more than America as long as inflation has not become entrenched. Inflation gets baked into economies when workers and firms come to believe that prices will continue to rise and start to demand higher wages and prices in return. This is why central banks are closely monitoring inflation expectations and taking action as necessary to keep them in check. For example, if inflation expectations become too high, central banks may raise interest rates to cool down the economy and bring inflation back under control. Overall, while falling energy costs have brought relief to price watchers, the current inflation trend is not easily explained by traditional economic theories and is caused by a complex combination of factors. The speed at which inflation comes down may depend on how these factors affect economies on either side of the Atlantic and on the actions taken by central banks and governments. As the world continues to recover from the pandemic, it will be important to closely monitor inflation expectations and take appropriate action to keep them in check.